Good afternoon, Cornerstone people. Really grateful that you are joining today. I have to say, you probably noticed I have a little bit of uh, sun on my face, and uh, I actually have a little sun on my on my chest. No show and tell today for that, but um, I got out and didn't flip myself as many times as I needed to yesterday. So uh, yes, I have been enjoying a little bit of our summer in Lettington. And uh, hey, Renee, glad that you're joining us today. And uh, if you're with us, please just comment. Let it let me know that you're with me today. That would be great. We're looking forward to prayer today. We are going to pray. Hey, Tina, glad to see you. And uh, so hopefully you've been able to enjoy the last several days. The lake has been gorgeous. The sand has been squeaky and soft and beautiful. Um, that's what the people at the beach told me that I, I heard and I experienced that. The water is great. actually went swimming in the lake um, with my daughter. Man, that was refreshing. Awesome. And uh, we are blessed to be able to be here. We're blessed to be the church. Um, hello, Ann. Glad to see you today. Ann, happy Monday. Yes, it is a happy Monday. Sandy, you are exactly right. And uh, glad that you're here to pray today with us. We have really been enjoying our 242 prayer times as a church. And this is kind of my, this is, a, we're sort of wrapping these up, but we're going to continue in prayer um, throughout our church's life together because that's what the church does. The church prays. And we are uh, wrapping up our 242 prayer times. I'll be doing one today and Pastor Joel will be doing the last, his, the last, last one tomorrow. So the fancy word for the day is the penultimate. I think I'm the penultimate prayer guy today, and Pastor Joel will be the ultimate prayer guy tomorrow, so we're really looking forward to that. But we're going to continue in prayer. We will pray today, but we're going to be continuing uh, in prayer. I just wanted to remind us who we are as a church. So uh, God says in his word, I think it's 1 Peter chapter 2, but you, the church, are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful, maybe marvelous, can't remember, into his wonderful light. We are his special chosen people. We are his, we belong to him, and he's called us out of darkness into light so that we can declare the praises of him. We're, we're meant to be for the praise of God, uh, our lives. We're just trophies of his grace. We're examples of what God can do with a messed up person to bring about his glory, his change, and his transformation. So if we, are, if we look anything like Jesus, it's not about us. It's all about him. And so we just want to praise the Lord for that today. Um, I did want to read Acts chapter 2, 42 through 47, because this has sort of been the our prayer time focus. This is the verse that led us to our 242 prayer time. And I just want to focus on what the church is, who we need to be. So never stop being the church. Never, we never stop being the church. We're always the church. We're sent on a mission. Uh, God's mission to share his love, to share the gospel, and to uh, influence and, and impact our culture with the good news of Jesus Christ. So this was the early church. This was the church just after Peter, Peter preached his incredible message on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was given to give birth to the church. By the way, the church is God's idea. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? The church is God's idea. And we are, we're just a part of this wonderful, miraculous, incredible uh, group of people that he gave birth to uh, that, that is the place where his Holy Spirit lives in us, and we are the church. So this is that first group of believers, 3,000, about 3,120 right after Pentecost. And this is what it says about the church. 
Uh, so those who accepted his message, Peter's message, were baptized. And that day, that day they were baptized, about 3,000 of them were added, were added to them. And they devoted themselves. Devoted means that they consistently, continually poured themselves into this. They consistently, continual, continually poured themselves into being the church. And this is what they were doing. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching to fellowship. So they were devoted to the apostles' teaching, which is the word of God, which is what Jesus would have taught them. Following the Great Commission, they were teaching every all the followers to obey everything that Jesus had commanded them. So they were teaching them that. Um, to the fellowship, which means that they devoted themselves to one another. They were mutually participating in one another's lives. They were excited about that. They consistently did it. That verb um, devoted means that they were continually, it was, it's a present and an active verb. And so they were always, always doing it. Hey, Diane, I'm glad that you're here today too. So they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, which would have been uh, communion, but it also would have been like a fellowship meal. So they were in each other's homes. They were celebrating and participating in one another. They were breaking bread. They were actually having like uh, sitting around a table and sharing life together, talking about life, talking about their relationship with Jesus, really organic, just personal, real life in Christ kind of stuff around the table. And they devoted themselves continually to the prayers, not only prayers publicly in the church building or in the temple building. Hola, Alan. Uh, glad to see you today, Alan, my friend. Uh, Benediciones, we are, they devoted themselves also to prayer um, together. And that's exactly what we're, we're doing today. Um, I want you to con consider maybe even continuing to do this on your own. Um, we, I had to learn how to do a Facebook Live. <laughs> wow, you know, I, you should have seen some of my earlier ones. This one's hopefully okay. Some of my earlier ones were not so good. And so, but it's all right. Um, maybe God would want you to have like a time of prayer that you could do, um, just go Facebook Live, uh, set up a time with some of your friends or uh, if you're not able to get together and pray and virtually pray together. Just spend a little bit of time praying together. Um, you could lead a time like this. And um, that would be really, really uh, awesome. Um, so not only... Uh, have you experienced this over the last couple months, but maybe God's leading could lead you to do this if the Holy Spirit is leading you to do that. So prayer is important. We, there's a lot of different ways that we can pray personally, virtually, all over the place and uh, wherever God leads us, you know, no one can stop us from praying. And uh, that's, that's a, a great encouragement. Um, I want to wrap up with a couple resources after we get done praying today. And uh, just encouraging you to stand firm in prayer, stand firm in the Lord, and uh, stand firm in the spiritual warfare that we're going through um, right now. We're always at war. That's uh, one of the things that uh, Pastor Joel's message reminded us of on Sunday, is that we are at war. Um, we are at war uh, against the enemy, and we are fighting uh, even our own desires sometimes. And so we are at war, and we want to pray in the spirit in all occasions uh, for all of the saints and is to keep on alert and keep on praying. Um, so I have a couple resources that I'll share with you at the end on how to keep this going, on how to keep you going. And I just want to thank you for being faithful to join in this time of prayer. Maybe sharing these, these videos are being posted uh, to um, our YouTube page afterwards. So Share these with our, your friends if they could use some encouragement. If you know someone who's really uh, discouraged or depressed or down or just having anxiety or fear um, or just that they're in the blahs and it's like, oh, <laughs> I'm ready to move forward. And uh, maybe these can be an encouraging, encouraging thing for you too. So let's, uh, let's go to prayer. Let's pray together, um, asking for God's uh, help and encouragement and uh there's a there'll be a couple links that we'll put in here uh for you to help you 
uh, continue in this. So let's go ahead and pray together, asking God to help us to keep at being the church, being who he wants us to be, and uh, touching people's lives with the good news of Jesus Christ. Our Father in heaven, we come into your presence today through the blood of Jesus Christ, through his death, and through his resurrection on the cross. We stand before you today, God, humbly, but we stand in the name of Jesus Christ for your church, for our communities, Lord, for our state and our nation. And we just stand, Lord, today, and we want your will to be done. We're just praying in the name of Jesus Christ that you would be powerful and strong, God, that you would be working through your church, Lord. I ask that you would give your church the power through the Spirit to be the church, that we would be who you want us to be, Lord, your people declaring your praises, that we've been brought out of darkness and into your marvelous light, the light of Jesus Christ, the light of knowing you, God, that we can walk in the light as you are in the light. And I just pray, God, that you would help us to humbly rely on your Holy Spirit today. Lord, we pray for your church. We pray that you would help us to be devoted to the Word of God. Lord, we just ask that you would help encourage us, that we would not, we would not be discouraged by what's going on in this world, but we would be encouraged knowing that you're at work, God, that you're bringing people to know you. And I pray that we would be people devoted to your word. I just ask, God, that you would help us to find good resources, that we could be encouraged as we talk with one another, asking one another what we're reading in the word and how you've been working in our lives. I just ask, God, that you would help us to be devoted to your word. I pray, Lord, that you would help us also to be devoted to one another. I ask, God, that you would strengthen our ties of friendship and family within the body of Christ. I pray that we would love one another just as you have loved us, Lord Jesus. What a high calling you've given us, God, to love the way that you've loved us, and there's no way that we can do it without your Holy Spirit's power and work in our lives. And so we just ask, God, for you to fill us up with the Holy Spirit, God, that you would pour out your Spirit on your beautiful body, the church, today that we could be filled to the full measure of, of all the fullness of Christ today, God. And I just ask, God, that we would know how much we're loved by you and that we would love one another with that same love. I pray, God, too, that we would be devoted to um, communion together, our fellowship with one another around the table. I pray, God, that you give us good conversations with believers today. Help us to encourage those that are discouraged. Help us to keep our eyes open and our Help us to be alert and to keep on praying for all of your people, God. Um, as we have a thought, Lord, throughout our day, I pray you'd help us to pray for uh, people. Lord, I just thank you for the whole body of Christ, the big body of Christ in Ludington today. I bumped into some people from one of the other churches today, God, and just wanted to thank you for the for the uh, unity of our ch of your church, the big church in Ludington. I pray that that would continue and increase, God. All of us who are followers of Jesus Christ and a part of your big church in Ludington, God, I pray for harmony and unity and power, God, and that you would allow us to reach into our community creatively and uh, practically, that we can demonstrate that we are one in Jesus Christ, Lord, and we'll give glory to you. People will know that you sent your son Jesus Christ because of the love that you've that we demonstrate to one another in our community. And I just pray, God, for a gospel movement in Ludington, that you would move people to believe and to trust in Jesus Christ. And again, God, I just pray that you would wake up your church. Lord, just wake us up to live in the power of the Spirit today. God, thank you for making us alive. God, we're no longer dead. We're, we've been brought into this wonderful kingdom of light in Jesus Christ. And I just ask that you would empower your church today. Empower us, God, to, uh, to walk in the Spirit and to live a life of love, Lord. And then help us just to be devoted to the prayers. Help us to be devoted to praying. That we would pray in, in the Spirit, Lord. That we would pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And that we would see you do just miraculous things, Lord, healing people, uh, empowering us to overcome discouragement, to, to beat back depression, God, and that we would just be filled with your spirit to overflowing. God, I just thank you 
for what you're doing in our families, Lord. We know our families are under attack. We know that our church is under attack. Lord, we know that we are in a war, but we know that Jesus Christ, that Lord, we know that you've already won the victory. And we just want to thank you for your victory through your death and through your resurrection, through the blood, your blood, Lord Jesus. We stand victorious, not on our merit, but by your merit alone, God, through your finished work. And we're so grateful for that. Help us today, God. Help us as a church. Help us to keep moving forward in the gospel. Help us to be making disciples that make disciples that make disciples. And Lord Jesus, we just ask that you would shine your light through us into this community and in this world, Lord. We just pray for your powerful movement of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, so glad that you are able to be here today for prayer. And uh, Carol, we do have one more prayer time tomorrow. Pastor Joel is going to be wrapping it up. Um, one of the things that empowers prayer, I've found in my own life, is um, the Word of God. And so here's my, I'm scrambling for my resources here. Um, this is one really great resource. If you, there we go. If you can see it, it's a Bi the Bible in One Year app. Um, I've been using it recently. If you don't have a regular reading plan, there, we'll take that away. It's the Bible in One Year app, and it's from Alpha. And so um, Donna is doing uh, comments today for, for us, and so uh, she'll put that little link in the comments there. So if you do not have a Bible reading plan, um, it's helpful. Don't You don't want to kill yourself reading the Bible, but you do want to be, you know, you don't have to read too much. You just need to read consistently, interact with God in his word through, the, and the Holy Spirit will use that to speak to you and to help you to know which way you need to be going that day. Uh, it's incredible how God can speak to us through his word, through the Holy Spirit. And so if you're, if you, uh, don't have a reading plan, that would be a great place to do that, just to be consistent uh, in that. And again, that's on your, you can uh, download that. Or if you're a, a dad or a mom or a grandma or grandpa, and you really want to see your grandkids or kids involved and engaged in the Bible and you on their level, this is a great resource that we have. And Donna's going to put this also in there too. We have some of these here at the church building uh, where we meet. If you'd like to get this, this is the gospel story by Marty Makowski. And this kind of points to Jesus. All the stories in the Old Testament, it talk, points to Jesus in the gospel on the cross. All the New Testament stories focus back on Jesus and the cross. And it's just a great, um, it's, the, the subtitle of the book is Discovering Jesus in the Old and the New Testaments. Man, this is a great, we love to see as many families get this as possible. Um, it's really a great book. If you're looking to have a little family devotion time and don't know what to do, this is for maybe younger kids. Um, this would be great to use. And the Bible app, the Bible in One Year app would be great to talk about. Maybe you could take one little section and talk about that as a couple, as a single, with your friends, with your family, with your children. And uh, that would be really, really uh, helpful. Um, Oh, and uh, we do have a prayer request. We'll just wrap up with one more, um, one little quick prayer for uh, uh, someone who's watching from Pakistan, who uh, whose sister and brother have a problem with black magic. So we're going to go to prayer right now uh, for um, for the whole family. Yes, and uh, uh, so. Uh, Irfam, if you are watching right now, we just want to let you know if you have believed in Jesus Christ, you are our brother. You are not alone. We are standing with you, standing firm in prayer for your family right now. God says, gr the word of God says, greater is he that is in you that he, than he that is in the world. And so we stand with Jesus Christ victorious against all the powers and authorities. Jesus has totally uh, made a spectacle of them through his death and through his resurrection. And so we're going to go to prayer right now for them. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we stand with Urfam and his family against the work of the enemy. Lord, we just ask in the power and the name of Jesus Christ that you would crush the work of the enemy in his family's life. I pray, God, that you would bring them to faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I pray that you would pour out your spirit on their family, God, 
and that you would bring healing and help and that you would rescue them. Lord, we just claim your promise that if we believe in Jesus Christ, that we're brought out of the kingdom of darkness and into your kingdom of light. And we pray this in the powerful name only through the work of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're just really grateful to be able to pray. Irfan, we love, we'll look, we really love to hear how God answers these prayers and we'll keep on praying. God bless you, church family. God bless you, Cornerstone friends. Let's keep on praying. Let's keep on being the church. God bless. Have a great day.